What mining jobs can overseas workers get in Australian mines? Welcome to Conversations About Mining. Hi, Jess. How are you? Yeah, great, Andrew. How are you going? Yeah, really good. Thank you. So today's question has been sent in by a number of people on my channels and your channels and everything like that. How can and what jobs, what mining jobs can overseas workers get? And um, before COVID, the answer was simple, none. Um, but since COVID, they've changed the rules. And what they've changed them to is that if you've got a visa now that you don't need a sponsor, so like a working holiday visa, then you can get a mining job if the employer will hire mm -hmm. you. And that's probably the biggest thing is if the employer will hire you because um, when COVID first hit and they were really struggling for people, they tapped the market with a lot of the overseas um, workers, the backpackers and all that sort of stuff. And um, a lot of the companies had mixed results. So you get some companies that love them and want to hire them all the time. And then you get other companies that don't want to touch them with a 10 foot barge pole. I don't know what your feedback's been like on it at all, but that's been what we've been finding on our side of things. Yeah, ours was very much the same. It was about a 50-50. Some were amazing. Um, some people were stoked with the staff that they got and, the, you know, the, 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 you know, tenacity of people and the ingenuity and they were just jumping and doing whatever and they ha had great, great responses and feedback and we'll continue to hire working holiday visa candidates. And then on the flip side, there was a few that were like, nah, it was a nightmare. They all came, they partied. You know, they blew numbers um, and, you know, they just treated it as a big holiday. And so there was very varying kind of results. Don't let that put you off, though, if you are looking at getting into it. Obviously, everyone's different and each employer, you know, will discern whether they're going to hire you or not. But it's about really making yourself the best candidate for them. It's about them looking at your resume and say, OK, well, you know, you may only be here for 12 months, but... You've got all the education. You've got all the tickets and qualifications that you need. We don't need to sponsor you, you know, this getting 12 months out of you. someone. Exactly. Getting 12 months out of someone can be quite a good slog in money because a lot of the time they're out of there in a few days. Yep. So, yeah, 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 exactly right. If you're looking at a driller's offsiders job or an underground truck driving job or driving an Adji or something like that, th those jobs have got huge turnovers for the new starters. Yep. So if they can get somebody wedged in there for 12 months, that sorts a problem out for them. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose the best advice that we can give to people is to educate yourself to start with and understand that if you come over green and you don't know anything about mining, then for you to become a productive member of crew, the employer is going to need to spend two to three months teaching you. Whereas if you do the training mm -hmm. and you come over and you're prepared, then the employer can look at you and say, oh, I can get this person up to speed in three to four weeks and get a productive member of crew. That to start with makes a huge difference to getting a job and the next thing that i would tell people is you've got to go where they need people like jess told yeah. a really good story a few videos ago about one of the guys that jumped in his car and went up to caratha and um, ended up driving trucks up there um, he went where the work was at the moment the majority of the work that you'll get in australia is in gold mines and so you yeah. should be looking at the middle of new south wales the top end of queensland um it, Kalgoorlie, Kalgoorlie is probably the number one place that you should look at. There's probably 50 mines within 100 cases of the joint that are all looking for people at the moment. And what I'm trying to say to people, what I'm trying to say at the moment is that you need to be standing in front of the employer and solving a problem for them. And that's how you're going to get your job. So when you head to places like Kalgoorlie, they tend to be really transient. So um, they go through a lot of people anyway. And so only having 12 months or, you know, even if you can extend out for longer of that, which a lot of people can, but even if just the 12 months is more than enough for them to go, yes, I'll hire you, especially if they can get you up to speed in the first three weeks. If, if it's going to take them two or three months to get you up to speed, then it's, uh, you know, still like that. But if it's only three weeks, it's a big no brainer for them. And if you already know what a jumbo is and what a bogger is and you know how it all works, then, you know, it just makes it really, really easy for them to hire you. And that's what you need to do. If you want a mining job, you know, head over, but make sure that you come prepared. And so you can do all the training and organize your resume and have it all done in your home country before you even hit the ground. And then that way you can have a look at getting a mining job. And the other brilliant thing about 
Kalgoorlie is, is that um, it pays all the jobs pay a lot of money. So if you don't end up with a mining job in Kalgoorlie or the mining towns around the country, you normally end up with a well-paying job anyway, and you can sock the money away that you want to. So you can take the next stage of your holiday that you want to take. And that's the whole point behind a mining job, I reckon, is so you can make as much money as you can. So you can party as hardy as you can later on. Exactly. And I think the, the thing that I get emailed and, and, you know, get messaged through on all of the social media channels is, you know, can you sponsor me? What type of visa do I need? How do I get there? This is where I'm from. And honestly, we, we all we can say is you need a visa that you don't need sponsorship for. But any other questions in depth about your specific situation, please reach out to a registered Australian migration agent. Reach out to someone or someone in your country that, you know, has done it before and is a registered, reputable migration agent because we really can't answer those questions for you. Everyone's, you know, everyone's situation is different and you, you might be a highly qualified and experienced mining operator or mining engineer or, you know, have extensive mining experience in your country. But we don't know how that translates over here until we actually go through the process with you, go through your qualifications and before any of that happens and you spend any money on our courses or our resumes or any of our packages, you really need to make sure that you've got your visa sorted out and have a rough idea of travel dates. It doesn't have to be in stone, but just so that you know that when you can start applying, then you can start getting everything else together and figuring out what you need to change over when you get here. And we can help you with all of that type of thing, like, you know, how to do your driver's license and how to get your white card and how to get your police clearance and all of that stuff. Um, but we just can't help you if you're looking for a sponsorship visa or to get a job because entry-level FIFO roles will not sponsor you. It will not happen. You will not find an entry-level role within Australia, um, within the mining industry, that will sponsor you at an entry level. Um, it just won't happen. So the, the only reason we sort that side of things out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the only reason that it's happening at the moment is because they changed the rules with the working holiday visas because of COVID. Yeah. If they change the rules yeah. back, it'll be just shut down to Australian workers again. Oh, and Kiwis, because the Kiwis get a start because we've got reciprocal working relationships with them. And, <clears throat> and I yeah. think Canada as well. Um, they've started doing it with Canada and maybe the UK. It is Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, the working holiday visa seems to be working really well. And some of those working holiday visas, you can extend to two and three and four years, I've been told. So, you know, when you mm -hmm. can do stuff like that, it makes it perfectly viable. But you've got to know what you're getting yourself into. You've got to understand, you know, I find a lot of people lob here and then they hear about mining and then they spend about three months trying to work out what they're going to do. They go and spend a whole heap of money on tickets. Oh. We found out mm -hmm. about a guy in Queensland that's selling tickets to a whole heap of Irish backpackers coming in and even going so far as telling them to put a bit of, you know, work experience on their resume that's not real. Um, you yeah. know, the industry's so small, it takes 30 seconds for that shit to go around. And once that shit goes around, you know, you might as well not have the tickets because when they look at that organization, everybody knows who it is. And, um, yeah, yeah, it's not worth the paper that it's written on, unfortunately. Um, yeah. So no. just be aware. It's, yeah. We yeah. hear it every week. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's, it's crazy, you know, um, cause like with the hard rock side of things, you know, they can't use equipment tickets. So, you know, yeah, it's just, it's just nuts. All you do is show the employee that you don't know how their mind works and that's exactly. how not to get a job. <laughs> you know, if you want a and job, I have this to... conversation, I have this conversation at least daily about if you're looking for a FIFO construction, a civil role, awesome. Tickets are going to be great for you. But if you're looking to get into production mining in any way, shape or form, those tickets are not necessary. And it just makes, it does, it makes you like look like you don't know what you're talking about or what you're doing because it, it doesn't mean anything. I've, I've watched like, you know, with my jobs in the past and stuff that I've done before, I've been in the room when I watched Foreman's Cull. And as soon as they see a, a resume with a, you know, that's full of equipment tickets on the front page, like it's supposed to get you with a job, I just throw it straight in the bin because the person doesn't know anything about mining. And a, a, a resume from a miner doesn't have any of those tickets there. They've just got the last job that they were on and what they did. That's it. And you're lucky yeah, to get a one page. Yeah, and the list page. of what they've operated. And yeah, actually yeah. the list of what they've operated, which is what you need to have operated, which is yep. the big excavators and loaders and dozers and dump trucks, the, the things that are used on site and the way that they're used 
methods and the things yep. that they use for are completely different in a civil setting. Yep. A lot of it can be transferable skills, but yeah, that's yeah, it's not going to mean anything. It's yeah. it's yeah. it's not going to hinder your application, but it's not going to get you anywhere. And it's a lot of money to spend, you know. Um, to have something listed on your resume that you're never actually going to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, you know, the, the, the foremans that I know, they cull with it, you know, and the last thing you want to do is be culled. Um, yeah, so definitely. And um, there's lots of work over here. Don't worry. Don't feel like you there's a right and a wrong time to come over if you're chasing it and a, a mining job and all that sort of stuff. You know, I've been in the industry for 30 years and whenever we get through into a great big boom like we're in at the moment, it never stops. They just keep churning through people unfortunately it's it's pretty brutal um they go through a lot of new starters and yeah it's just not for everybody and if you don't pick it up quick enough then you know it's next and um it just is what it is so the more prepared you are for it all the easier it's going to be to get that job and make that money that you want and have the experience that you want but you need to be yeah. ready to go you know before you hit the ground so if you've got any questions that you want asked, if you want to send them through, please send them through. And if you could share the video around and like and subscribe the channel. Thanks. Thank you.